ANC Secretary General Gwede Mandashe has come under fire for his remark supporting Ramaphosa to take over from Zuma and suggesting that a woman must be made deputy president instead. Presidential hopeful Lindy Wesisulu has lashed out at Mandashe's remarks, calling him biased and patriarchal. Sisulu told students at the University of Cape Town that Mandashe should be neutral and objective since he is the ANC Secretary General. She says the SG should not have but said a woman cannot be president of the party in the upcoming December election. Of conference. We want the president of the ANC, male or female. Okay, we are not looking for a woman president. There will be nothing wrong in an old movement like ours to say to manage the transition. We think that time has arrived to have a female leader. That city. We must get a deputy president that is a woman. An old woman in 105 years cannot gamble with leadership. It must manage succession. And I thought I needed to raise this with Comrade Guetta. Because it shows such deep-seated patriarchal tendencies. And it is so deep-seated that he can actually verbalize it and not even be embarrassed about it. And secondly, I thought that it was very wrong of Comrade Gwede to express his preference when there is an election. Why have an election when he's already predetermined what it is that he would have wanted? I would like to see an ANC whose constitution says that if the office of the Secretary General is running the election or the conference for the elective conference, then the Secretary General should be as neutral as possible. And, so, and here are some of the arguments Mandashe and Sisolo have put forward on the issue. The Secretary General says, if you come to me and say you want a woman president, I'll say that there is no such a thing in the ANC. Sisolo hit her back saying the shameful patriarchal attitude Gwede displays shows he has not understood the ANC and its value. And Mandashe further says, in the ANC, we choose a president of the ANC, male or female. Sisulu went on to say that Gwede lacks the necessary objectivity and credibility to run a democratic conference. Mandashe says, if uh, we are overlooking the deputy president, we must explain to the party and society that these are his weaknesses. While Sisulu argued that the office of the SG should, uh, uh, is out to be neutral, uh, or to be neutral rather, and to ensure that everybody is exercising their democratic right. And Susulu also took a dig at ANC Chief Webber Jackson Mtembo, saying his statements which refer to her as politically immature were misdirected and are fueling factional fires. Mtembo, while defending Mandashe on his presidential comments, said Susulu's comments showed her political immaturity and that uh, she lost her marbles. He's in the position of a Chief Web. His responsibility when he comes across information is to check that information. Only then would he give a response. I found that uh, his response actually misdirected and, f and fueled the fire that was misdirected. He is the one that created this raging fire completely out of context with everything else that was, being, that was said. If he had called, it would have been clarified and he would have made the necessary comments if he wanted to. I thought that his comments were very partisan, very patronizing and I could go on. But I have indicated in my statement that I, in his position, I'd like him to verify information. It is the, it, it's a, it's the right thing to do. And joining us in the studio is Udo Fruza, independent political analyst. And we have advocate Noma Zorjo Memani, who is an ANC Women's League member. And uh, in studio, Papa No Pashaf with the uh, Progressive Professionals Forum as their spokesperson. And Carl Niehaus, MKMVA NEC member, joins us on, on the phone line. And Suraya Bibi Khan, South African woman in dialogue, uh, a leader and founder. Thanks so much uh, to all our guests for joining us. Let's just start with you, advocate Memani. It seems that uh, Gwede Mandashi might have a sense that come the elective uh, conference in December he will not be part of the NEC or is he just deliberately trying to be divisive? I think he is deliberately trying to be divisive and then by 
saying those things. And it also he's also exposing himself, you know, as the Secretary General of the ANC Women's, I mean, ANC to talk like that. I mean, in an ANC, in an organization that treats women, both women and, and men equal. But it's also an embarrassment, I mean, even for those women who might be willing to vote for Cyril, you know, to follow such a statement. Mm. But yes. it has been said before that in the ANC, it is quite a traditionalist, almost patriarchal, uh, environment, willing to settle for the 50-50 parity, but not necessarily when it comes to leadership, Udo. Is this a reflection, maybe, of the party not being ready uh, for a woman leader? Well, the party is ready for a woman leader, I must say. I'm sure that is my observation. You know, one needs to actually know the background and the history of the two, of Ramaphosa and of, 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 of Guido Mantashe. Ramaphosa and the ANC Secretary General Guido Mantashe come from the very, very long road together. They Remember, they both have a trade union background and they've been in close contact for a very long time. NUM's National Union of Mine Workers founding and funding was ably assisted in the olden days, in the 1980s, by the Chamber of Mines, respected by all the mining companies of South Africa. NUM seems to be controlled by the mining ch companies to this day and its leaders have always been well taken care of and that includes Ramaphosa and, and, and Mantashe. We should research and actually map out the networks of both gentlemen in order to understand because don't they share the same friends? Mm -hmm. And who are those friends? So a guilty by association in how even the policy ideology comes across from the presidential hopefuls, what you then would have to look at who their friends are, who they associated with, who they benefit from, which boards they sit on, on their pronouncement around uh, radical economic transformation. Uh, Papana, your, your observation between these two? Uh, look, uh, the, the ANC has a tradition of resorting to patriarchal and chauvinistic tendencies every time that you would have a woman or um, a question of a young person leading. So what we're seeing from Gwede is, uh, you know, that, that instance where uh, ANC senior leaders are resorting, uh, uh, you know, to, to those characteristics. Uh, one cannot be uh, truly surprised. Um, I think um, the, the, the Gwede Mandashe Cyril Ramaphosa slate did not anticipate uh, Lindy Wesisulu speaking out. And what is quite interesting as well is that um, if you look at the slate itself that has been going around, uh, Lindy Wesisulu has been punted as a deputy president. And she has come out to say that, look, I'm not ready uh, to, be, uh, to deputize anyone, in particular Cyril Ramaphosa. In fact, Cyril Ramaphosa should deputize uh, uh, me. So she has actually, you know, rattled uh, uh, feathers. She has angered uh, people who assumed that they have, uh, because there, there's also this perception that uh, Cyril uh, has, it's, in fact, justice must be done, because in 1993 and after that, uh, Cyril was uh, supposed to become the next ANC president. So she's saying that uh, that is not the culture and tradition of the ANC. You don't impose people. Hence, we've got contestation and we go to an elective, an elective, uh, elective conference. Sorry. Sorry about that. So, uh, you know, in, in, in the final analysis, I think this should be a, a call mainly to women to say that we've got males who are not ready to be led. Because remember, in the ANC, mainly, it's, it's mainly comrades. You, you, you're neither female and you're neither male. But in this instance, they're saying that, no, uh, she, must, uh, she must be groomed, she must be mentored. So it's, 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 it's a huge problem. But uh, I think that we should welcome uh, the decision by Lindy Wei to speak uh, uh, for herself and uh, to also proclaim that I've been in the trenches for a very long time and I'm ready to lead. Yeah, okay. Uh, she's definitely stemmed her authority, digging in her heels, Lindy Wei uh, Sesulo, as a presidential hopeful. Carl Niehaus, MKMVANEC member, joins us on the phone line. Good evening to you, Carl. Uh, just very quickly, I mean, Gwede Mandashe has come out about the automatic ascension to power by the Democratic, uh, or rather the Deputy President, uh, and now again saying that that, you know, it's neither woman or male, but as a matter of fact, that uh, Lindy Wesisolo should deputize uh, the deputy president. What do you make out of this? Is this a reflection of the party's inability at this point to embrace a female president? Well, I don't know if it's uh, inability to embrace a female president. I'm quite sure that the majority of members of the African National Congress are ready for a female president. In fact, I'm here at the Durban City Hall 
in a hall that is packed to capacity with a larger crowd outside the hall than inside, and they're here to listen to Dr. Nkosazana Tamini Zuma, and they're here to support her as the future president of the ANC. My concern is the way in which the Secretary General of the African National Congress is talking about this whole leadership contestation. He can't possibly say that there must be an arranged situation where the next president will be managed and arranged to follow the current president. We are a democratic organization, and as a democratic organization, we have elections. Elections are not something which is foreign to us, and we cannot say that the person who gets elected is then elevated to that position by chance. That is utterly unacceptable. Democracy is at the heart. It is the foundation of the ANC, and one would expect from our Secretary General to support that and to see that as the true foundation of the ANC. All right, Mr. Carl Niehaus, so we realize you have other engagements, and thanks so much for joining us. Carl Niehaus, MKNVA, NEC member. Sreya Bibi Khan from the South African Women in Dialogue joins us. Thanks so much for your patience. Uh, Agueda Mandashe, Mandashing again, seemingly putting his, his foot in his mouth, or, or rather, uh, you know, it, is he doing the ANC any favors, primarily with the issue around unity uh, going into the elective conference? I don't know if everybody knows, but there's a Me Too campaign that is, is going viral. And the Me Too campaign, I've just had a look at the Facebook of someone who wrote, if we are serious about dealing with toxic masculinities that give rise to sustained violence against women, as men, we need to engage with how we have been socialized. And I think that comes to the crux of the matter. Because in, 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 in political parties, my understanding that there is a collective. It's not a, a individual leadership. It's democracy in action with the collective going and going through the process of electing who it is. And there's poverty, there's unemployment. But the fundamental that I understand the ANC stands for is a non-racist, non-sexist, liberation movement political party now. And how do we explain the utterances in relation to the leadership uh, battle? Of theme? It seems to be a battleship, but it's a leadership. Uh, the characteristics, men and women can stand equally shoulder to shoulder and say we are the, the people that will be the top six and we will choose who serves whatever. Because I think as a society and a community, there's a need to build hope. It's very difficult. It's unbelievable to believe that anyone would say women can't lead in today's time. So I'm, I'm not so sure where it comes from. Um, I, I've not been very... Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but so do, before we let you go, Soraya, also just in, in changing the paradigm, you say these are obviously entrenched in society that we come, uh, and it's still a very... Uh, patriarchal, you know, um, that society that we're living in. H how then, if, if, if it's reflecting itself in politics, we also see it in corporate South Africa, the number of women representation. How do we shift the paradigm if uh, the, the political leadership doesn't seem to have an appetite for it? If you look at society, it is going to take a, a major shift in society from the faith base to whatever structures we have in society that people will have to come and realize the value of a woman. We cannot live in a society because we're, doing, we're, we're, we're busy with a campaign, a wave campaign, women's action, intergenerational faith. And you stand there and, and women would look at it and say, oh, my God, somebody's been raped. It's a five-year little girl that was raped. And men would ask, and therefore we can get society and communities to stand together and say, let's do, we are supposed to protect children. And what is the socialization that comes with it? And, and I feel sorry for people who cannot believe that the mother and the woman can be a leader. It is such a pity. But we have hope. Civil society has hope. We'll never give up. And there will be. 
a time when society comes to the point, I've been elected into, ne- uh, into women's uh, leadership positions by men. So I can't understand where this is coming from unless political parties have a different paradigm when it comes to elections and so forth and civil society is not at the same space or perhaps political parties are not at the same level of civil society interaction with ordinary people on the ground. We need to give hope. Mm. And we cannot have hope when this is the kind of behavior that's going on. Yeah. People will go to the December conference and they need to then put together a, 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 a group and everybody nominates and then they'll say this is the top six and the top six will decide which portfolios they are best suited to, to serve in because that's the question in relation to can people work as a collective or are we all about the individuals that makes up uh, the collective and wants to be the leader. Soraya, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so, so much, Soraya Bibi Khan, South African Woman in Dialogue. Just so back in studio, Advocate Mimani, there have been accusations around the ANC in terms of how you ascend to power or even have uh, economic opportunities, the term being pantypreneurs, etc., and the fact that we've only seen female ministers and premiers here and there. We've had one female deputy president, but ever since then we haven't seen uh, uh, as much representation of women, not only in the NEC, but at the top echelon. Yes, actually, that's what is happening, not only in the ANC, I think also in government and in the business as well. But then that is anti-ANC constitution, because the ANC constitution, it catered for both men and women. It talks of, you know, as, as she has indicated, it talks about non-racial and non-sexist. But then within that ANC, you find people like Abu Comrade Gwede Mantashe, who are, you know, who are patriarchy and then who just told themselves that they will never change. They will remain as they are, even though they are the leaders of the organization. And it's a pity because, you see, what is he doing now? He's not teaching uh, 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 the young people of the ANC. He is an embarrassment, if I can just put it uh, 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 shortly like that, because in the ANC of today, 2017, and then you find a general sec- secretary general of the ANC talking like that, for example, I know, I think he's panicking. I think he's worried that uh, his preferred candidate might not make it as the president of this organization. But then this is not about uh, individuals, and then this is about the ANC, and this is about the, the, the delegates of the ANC whom they would like to choose. Mm-hmm. And I think it is the time that ANC president must be a woman. Actually, I think we need to lobby in the ANC now, before the conference, that we must demand 60, I mean 50% of women in the top six of the ANC, so that they take these women seriously. Yeah, but let's look at uh, the SG, though. How much weight does he have in swaying uh, the support of any particular uh, pres- uh, presidential hopeful? Papan. Um, Cindy, I think before I actually answer that, um, I just I just want to give uh, context in terms of what Lindy was said uh, in relation to the history of uh, Gwede Mantashe. And I think when we evaluate some of these issues, it's important to also understand that uh, people like Gwede Mantashe and Cyril Ramaphosa became part of the ANC post-1990. And what Lindy had said was that where were they uh, in exile? Where were they in the underground uh, movement and so forth? So one must not be necessarily surprised because what is evident is that these are people who are not necessarily aware of the culture and tradition of the ANC because what the ANC has been advocating and the reason why we see so many women in positions of power is mainly because the ANC wants to change you know, the, the, the patriarchal uh, tendencies that has come to uh, characterize society. And what the, 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 the SG of the Secretary General of the ANC has done is to take the ANC back and perhaps uh, over and above that, uh, or what I expected in fact, was for ANC, uh, ANC members and members of the ANC Women's League to stand up and say not in our name. This is not what the ANC and the ANC Women's, uh, Women's League stand for. But now uh, quickly coming back to uh, the question that uh, you, you, you've asked. Uh, well, the SG, uh, the Secretary General, sorry, uh, can uh, uh, or has uh, the likelihood to influence. But the question is how, how far can he influence? 
whom can he influence? Well, the likelihood is that because he deals with administration, there is a perception that he will be able to uh, persuade um, administration to favor the candidate that he actually, uh, that he actually supports. And uh, last, lastly, uh, uh, Cindy, sorry, um, for any person, remember there are eight candidates at the moment. Um, I, I, I could imagine what they are thinking because the SG has taken a position. Does it mean that in terms of administration, he's mainly going to favor uh, Cyril Ramaphosa so that he can uh, uh, emerge in the, uh, in the December conference? So he has actually uh, stepped into a very dangerous uh, terrain. And I, I, and I think that, one, he cannot be trusted. Uh, two, uh, in terms of uh, women and what uh, the ANC stands for, he has taken the ANC uh, backwards. Mm. He should actually apologize. And, and I mean, also the, the concern that mm. it is about positioning yourself so that whichever horse you bet on, when they have the opportunity, you will uh, uh, be a beneficiary in, in their castle, so to speak. But with, with Gwede Mandasha and the relationship with Cyril Ramaphosa, that one he's made blatantly clear. It's not the first time that he overtly came out to support uh, the Cyril Ramaphosa, but the, the um, attack also on Lindy Wessisulu, not only from him, we saw with Jackson Mtembo, and the sense that you know she, she feels entitled because of, of her last name. Is this an attack just on the, the, the person, or is it just, a, 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 again, uh, repelling the whole idea of having a woman leader? is positioning in every which way. And, uh, you know, one should actually ask the question, will Mantashe be amongst the top six or top eight after, t after the December conference? I doubt it very much. Secondly, I also don't think that he will be, there's the rumor that he wants to become the next, premier, the next chairman of the ANC. Even that, I doubt whether he'll make it. And, and thirdly, there's also another rumor, very strong rumor, that he has ambitions to become the premier of the Eastern Cape province. Again, he will never see that one at all. So his popularity, and he knows it, it's not it's nothing new to him at all. He knows that he's not popular. He knows that he is actually a very weak contender for deputy presidency. Or any, he knows that, even though he's backed by powerful people outside the ANC, but that seems to be not strong enough, that, that powerful backing. Mm. I mean, it's interesting that now that I think of, in terms of the most prolific of the eight presidential hopefuls, that they haven't been exposed to as much criticism as opposed to the two female uh, yes. you know, contenders, yes. mm -hmm. especially with Dr. Dlamini Zuma and the link with President Jacob Zuma being the former mm -hmm. uh, spouse, etc., that almost being a cloud over her head, and uh, Linda Wessusolo as well. I mean, it's going to get messier mm -hmm. from here, Advocate Mimani. Yes. That, you know, where is the Women's League, as Papano was asking? Where are you when it matters the most? The, the problem is that, you know, as an organization, there's an NEC, the National Executive uh, 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 Committee of the ANC, where issues are debate. They're debate in an open manner. And then now when you find that the Secretary General goes to the media, it becomes also an embarrassment to the organization, as I've indicated earlier on. And as I've said, you know, what he is, what he is doing, he, has, he is doing a disservice even to the Cyril or the Cyril uh, 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 crew. For, 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 for what he, 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 he is saying. You know, I, I think, like I've indicated, what, what the SG has done, he has disappointed the organization. Because, for example, I would look at 2007, whereby um, Comrade Kalima was the Secretary General of the ANC. I think he was not in favor of Comrade Thabo Mbeki to be the president, but he has never issued or uttered such statements in the media. You know, he went, he went into his branch, he lobbied into his branch, and then as the, and, and he kept that dignity of the Secretary General of the ANC by always relaying the message of the ANC, not his personal or, or, or his personal, personal views. Mm -hmm. And I think as is what uh, Udo is saying, you know, perhaps maybe, I think maybe he owes uh, Comrade Cyril something because they are both from, from the trade unions and, and there are a lot of things that are said between the two. But, but I'm not going to say anything at this point in time. Yeah. But what he is doing, it's a disservice and it is an embarrassment. And, uh, you know, he has brought the ANC into disrepute. Mm. I'm but saying that as a member of the He does the feel ANC like an unpalatable person. Mm. Uh, but thanks indeed for your insights. Much appreciated. Uh, Udo Fuzza is an independent political analyst. Advocate Noma Zokyo Mimani is an ANC Women's League member. Papa no Pasha is with the Progressive Professionals Forum as the spokesperson. Carl Niehaus, MKMVA, NEC member on the phone lines. Rea Bibi Khan, South African Woman in Dialogue. And you at home, thanks so much for watching. ANC Decides is after this.